All right, guys, it's Adam here, picking up the car. Let's check out the engine bay, and then we'll um, do some POV on the way home. Oh. So, what was done to the car? We've got a, uh, you can barely see it, we got the new um, CTS crank pulley down here. New oil change, new oil pan. Let's see if we can see it from under here. Brand new oil pan from USP. Let's see, can we see the guy? No, it's under there. Uh, brand new bull X downpipe from the factory that we've uh, we've wrapped in the thermal thermal wrap here. Wrap goes all the way down to the cat and then stops. And we've got our Ford Motorsport turbo blanket on here. Um, that was it for changes. So crank pulley, downpipe, wrap, turbo blanket from Forge, CTS crank pulley, oil pan and oil change, uh, out the door, labor was 750 a lot of money, but um, these guys do a nice job. So let's uh, hop in the car here. It's gonna be sealed. So for you guys who use install a turbo blanket, um, once you, once it seals your seats, you really don't uh, take it back off. It's, it's set for the life of the turbo, which in my case might be 1,000 miles, maybe 10,000 miles, we'll see. I crank her up, a little cold start here. Wow. Oh, it's so much quieter. No more, no more exhaust noise underneath my ass. Okay, hello everyone, it's Adam here. Man, I haven't used the GoPro for a POV, a POV first person recording will now start. set up in a very long time. So this is uh, a little crazy. Okay, um, the thing is so much more quiet now. Even the resonator delete, uh, even with the exhaust flaps open, the larger downpipe, it's so much quieter from what it was uh, with that terrible um, exhaust leak that we had. Ugh. Sounds good. All the sound is coming out there now, which is great. Well, for a four cylinder, that's good. Oil temp's not good yet, so we're not going to flow it out of here. Okay, Let's get a little bit of uh, AC going here. So I'm going to uh, end this video uh, when I'm all done talking and show you guys exactly what everything looks like. I don't know how I look, but it's Friday afternoon at five, so give me a break here. Um, so total cost was about 700. That uh, sounds so much better now. It's actually quiet again. Uh, total cost is about 700 for the whole thing. Um, let me go over some of the issues here. I'm going to try to stay focused, though, because honestly, uh, I need to I need to keep an eye on the smoke clearing out of here. So it's supposed to smoke a little bit. What happens when you install a turbo blanket is um, it's got a, a, a thermal material that holds the heat in the turbo and, and you know, doesn't dissipate into the engine bay, thus keeping the, yes, the engine components cooler. Turbos are meant to handle very, very high 1,000, 2,000 degree temperatures. So it's not a huge issue to keep all the heat in the turbo and dissipates through the exhaust system. Um, one thing I was concerned about, so when I got the new downpipe down, I realized that the V-band clamp for the downpipe is really close to the cap. Um, and I originally ordered thermal or heat wrap, exhaust wrap, and the silicone uh, paint spray stuff for thermal spray uh, for the car. Uh, I ended up not using it. I'm not bringing it with me because when I saw how close the, the, the V-band was to the cat, I had read somewhere that you don't wrap the cat because it's going to damage the cat uh, by holding all the temperature in there. Well. <laughs> The guy had mentioned a previous conversation I had with him where I asked him to go out the catalytic converter. So he went down to the store and got some anyway and charged me 40 bucks for it. He mentioned to me, he said, I didn't ask you permission for that. So oil temperature is up to 130. Uh, so he said, if, if, if you have a problem with that, if it smokes, if it deteriorates, if the thermal wrap gets all fucked up, let me know and I will uh, uh, take that off and not, you know, 
give you a refund for that forty-nine club dollars. So, you know, I, I, I appreciate him doing that. Um, so right now we've got the uh, brand new uh, Bull X Downfly, brand new cat uh, with a Forge Motorsport Turbo Blanket. The Forge Motorsport Turbo Blanket was given to me at a discount in order for me to test it out um, uh, on the track. So I've got a lot of video clips you'll see in the future video, probably in the middle of October, where I compare the uh, engine temperatures before the Turbo Blanket with the temperatures now that the Turbo Blanket is installed. So that'll be great, right? Um, I hope it does the job. We'll see. The, uh, the wrap itself, those, both the thermal wrap and the uh, turbo blanket wrap are both meant to hold the heat in. They're a material that once they, once they get full, uh, once the exhaust is fully heated up, they start to bond to the metal. So once you take them off, they just crumble. They, they, they are a permanent bond, basically. Uh, so if you take them off, you gotta rewrap them. That's, that's by design. So uh, it's explained to me online and, and by the guys just now that the, the engine bays and a little bit of smoke coming out of it while the uh, blanket and wrap set once that's done with we'll be good to go um, so as for notes maybe I'll close some clips here as for notes on the downpipe uh, those of you who've watched the previous videos of the Bull X downpipe uh, and my issue with the exhaust the exhaust was coming where the bend is so when the, the turbo downpipe if you're facing forward the engine's right in front of you the turbo downpipe will bend here it'll have hit a little area that's like a soft uh, metal clamp and then it'll, uh, or metal kind of mesh material, that flexes a bit and allows you to flex back towards the exhaust system uh, underneath the axle, and, or behind the axle, and then you know clamp it up to the, uh, the hanger clips right underneath where I'm sitting. Um, I felt the exhaust leak coming from where that mesh bend is, and I gotta show you this thing. When they pulled it out of there, the downpipe was only hanging on barely to the metal. Uh, the, the, mesh, the mesh was completely deteriorated and it was only barely hanging on. Uh, I've been instructed to pay for shipping to get it back to San Diego, and uh, they're going to analyze it and let me know what they think. I hope they stand by their word of not charging me for a replacement downpipe, but we'll have to see what they say. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm really un, 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 unclear if they're going to feel the same way I do about it. We'll have to see how that goes. And of course, I'll let you guys know. Now let's get a, uh, a takeoff here now that we're at 185 Fahrenheit with oil. So what I was afraid of would happen is happening still, which is the um, which is the DV flutter. So I had reported to uh, to Fred at, at UM about um, four weeks ago that I noticed a, uh, a DV flutter sound. You guys probably couldn't hear that. I noticed a DV flutter sound um, both in the second to third gear shift, not not launch control, but launching, but without launch control, just flooring it. And I also noticed the flutter uh, when I let off the throttle after I'm happy with the speed I'm currently at. I'm gonna get out of sport here. Um, and he had indicated that it's not really something that they, they're familiar with as far as the tune impacting that. He suggested that I may pull back the, 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 the requested pounds that I'm asking for. This thing is so much quieter now. Um, as, a, as a way to maybe mitigate this. But um, it is a failure of a, of a DV, uh, either an exhaust leak or the DV beginning to fail. Uh, and I've already gone through one failed DV on this car. This is my second diverter valve that I would have to replace. Which is kind of a bummer, right? Um, let's go to normal, normal uh, DCC here. Um, my assumption was that this started during the exhaust leak in the Bullex Town. But when you see this thing, you're gonna be like, "That's not just a leak. That is a, that is, you have no exhaust." Um, I feel like because of that exhaust leak, it's a possibility. Now, again, I, I'm talking on my ass here, but I'm just trying to throw things at the wall to see what sticks as far as you guys think. I do think that possibly what was going on is the, uh, because of the leak, the diverter valve was having to work harder and work in extreme cases. It's all ECU controlled. And in those cases, it was having to uh, overwork itself and that caused a premature failure. I don't, I can't prove that, but that's kind of what I was thinking in my head. Now, my second thought was, well, now when the new Bull X downpipe is on, maybe the flutter goes away because it's now a, um, I have to work as hard. The, the exhaust gas is going in the right direction where it's supposed to go. Uh, 
but I just did a launch there again, just flooring and not an official launch. And I heard the fluttering again, again, second, first, second gear. And I heard it again when I let off the gas at 65 miles an hour. Um, that's a little concerning. The DV itself with the parts 140 bucks. Uh, when it goes, I don't mind buying a new one, but it's something I need to keep an eye out for. And I'll try to get some sound clips for you guys, not in this video, but in a separate video, giving you an idea of what it sounds like. Um, now about down to the uh, oil pan. So the oil pan was House of Dub. I plan on doing a separate video on this. Uh, maybe, we'll see. Uh, maybe I'll just insert it here as a clip. But basically that oil pan was shot. It wasn't leaking yet, but it was nearly at its, its limit for, uh, for, for holding oil. It would not have lasted the winter. Let's let make that clear. And uh, that's an oil pan that I reported to House of Dub in, I don't know, March, maybe April, that it was, it was going and they completely ignored me. Uh, so I've switched over to the, to the USB oil, oil pan and we'll just have to see how, uh, how that holds up. Our winters up here are brutal. Yes, I know I need a winter car, but uh, oil pans should last more than one year. Let's just be clear on that. Even if you live in uh, you know salt salt world, I don't know if that's a real place or not. Um, as for the uh, crank pulley set, I didn't really I didn't really plan on feeling anything. It's jumping uh, four, fifth. Let's do fourth. Yeah, I didn't really plan on getting any any feeling out of the, the, the crank pulley. Uh, we'll see if it impacts my quarter mile times. I mean, those kind of things are so hard to do because you basically have to bring like a, a lift with you to the drag strip, run the car, throw the crank pulley on there, run it again and see what happens and then hope that the engine's cool enough and the, 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 the variables are so minimal that it's going to make a difference. I guess I should have dynoed it. Uh, the gains were what, like five to 15 horsepower were the gains of the crank pulley. The guys that did the install um, absolutely told me that there was the weight difference is about half the size, half the weight, and it's also a bit smaller than the stock one. Uh, we'll see how it holds up. You know, the uh, the the pulley system on this car is obviously very very important. You uh, you want things to stay in time. Um, so let's just hope that the change we made to that doesn't catastrophically destroy my engine. Uh, crank pulley upgrades are very common uh, for VWs going back to the R32. So. We'll see, right? Uh, we're 10 minutes in, so let's uh, let's wrap this up. Um, oil change, obviously, might as well do that. Oh, I should get a picture actually of my uh, odometer because I need to I need to take a uh, a picture of the mileage for my oil change bit. Um, so new oil, new oil filter. What am I forgetting here? Oh, new spark plugs. I've got the spark plugs. I'll show you guys in the video what those look like. They only had 2,000 miles on them. I had that misfire issue that one day, which I with the recommendation of electric mechanics and uh, VW experts, I attributed to bad gas. Hasn't happened since then. I had the spark plugs on hands. So I did it anyway. Uh, again, I just throw money at things uh, without really truly assessing them, but spark plugs are really cheap compared to um, lots of other damages that could occur by having bad plugs. They weren't too bad. They were a little scorched. You know, I, I keep seeing the issue. Ever since the first pair of plugs I put in this car, I see a lot of uh, scorched oil in the seams, in the, in the, in the, the, uh, the yeah, not the seams, the, uh, uh, you know what I mean, <laughs> the threads, thank you, uh, whoever was just thinking of that. So a lot of scorched oil in the threads, the actual uh, firing point for the iridium plugs, they looked fine, so we'll see. Uh, I'll probably wrap this video up now though, the car is not smoking like I thought it would, to be honest. Um, it sounds much better now. Uh, I, I, I'm blown away by how good it sounds. Obviously, having not having exhaust leaks is, <laughs> is preferred here. Uh, but I think I'll wrap it up for now. So thanks so much for watching, you guys. And uh, we'll we'll have some um, some backup clips after this to show the downpipe, the oil pan, the plugs, and that's it. Uh, oil temp is at a, at a normal 217. So 217 to 230. 250 to 230 is my, my, my range. Uh, I slowed down, so now it's at 219. So that's a normal operating range for this thing. We don't appear to the, for a while, the um, the APR turbo boost gauge was kind of, uh, whatever, it held the throttle constant. It would like flicker a little bit, like a little bit. And I wasn't sure if it was the uh, boost gauge itself 
but it's not. It was definitely attributed to the exhaust leaks. The, the needle is now holding steady at whatever I hold it at now. So that's, that's gone away. There was definitely, clearly, some issues with the uh, with that exhaust leak being where it was. And, I, and again, it wasn't an exhaust leak. It was a hole. It was a massive, massive hole. The pipes were in half. And I can't wait to show you guys. So let's, um, let's merge safely. And then we will uh, end the video here. Let me in. Mama! Yeah, you guys can hear the flutter, can you? Can you hear it? If I let off the throttle, it's like... It's really a bummer. But, uh... That's going to be diagnosed in a separate video. I may go ahead and go on online and buy a replacement DV and just throw it in and see if the, the noise goes away. If it doesn't, I'll definitely lay a bit of pressure on um, on UM because all the all the turbo components are basically in good working condition. If uh, if it doesn't if it does go away, then I'll know it was the DV and maybe I'll put the old one back in until it fails and just keep the other DV in the car or something. Um, yeah, 14 minutes is good for this this little intro. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I love having the car back to normal. I really wish I could have done all the work myself. You know, $700 versus having access to my girlfriend's dad's uh, lift. I would prefer to have access to the lift. Uh, $700 is about $300 more than my car payment. So I really hope this Bullex downpipe lasts more than two years. That's all I gotta say. All right, uh, let's go ahead and stop for now. We'll catch the other clips. I'm gonna try to capture the DV flutter sound for you guys. The windows are down, AC is off. We're on a private course. Can we do a stop here? I uh, didn't quite do it that time, but maybe it sounded good enough for you guys to at least enjoy. Guys, we did it. We hit 30,000. <laughs> All right, what a milestone. New exhaust put in and 30,000 miles. Perfect. Also, nice odometer reading for the oil change, too. <laughs> All right, so here's our uh, our stock crank pulley. Uh, you can see the rust starting to set in there. And having handled the uh, CTS one, this thing is definitely, yes, yeah, so you can definitely see here how it, um, how it has some rust showing, but you know, nothing too major here. It was holding up okay. Let's check out the uh, oil pan now. And you guys are gonna laugh your asses off at this. All right, how's the dub oil pan the inside? Yeah. It's okay, I guess. But you can see here, some of these areas are starting to thin out a little bit. When we flip it over though, that's when the fun begins. You got the edge rust right here. When we flip it over, there's the bottom of it. And, and a lot of this uh, is black because I painted it. It actually wasn't, uh, it was fully red, as you guys saw in a previous video. But given how these corners looked, uh, my guys decided to go ahead and just rip it out and put the new one on. But it would not have lasted another winter, according to them. It was looking pretty shitty. So there's the other on the house of double oil pan. Here are UM tuned Mark 7 Golf R spark plugs that are RS7 VW OEM spark plugs that were supposedly pre gapped, so I never gapped them. Uh, after about 3,000 miles, they're labeled per cylinder. So let's get a closer look here. The cylinder one. And cylinder two. And three. And four. Be curious to know what you guys think of these. But 3,000 miles is nothing, so interesting, uh, interesting results. All right, here is our Bull X exhaust downpipe after uh, I don't know, roughly 15,000 miles or so, 20,000 miles, uh, two years of operation. Um, now I had wrapped, well, I had a professional wrap the bottom of this from here to the uh, hanger clamps because of the uh, rattling we had from this bolt. So that caused some um, 
Definitely some discolorations and premature rusting on the surface here, but nothing too crazy. I mean, you definitely tell the difference between the wrapped and the non-wrapped. It's a lesson for me on not wrapping it in the future. But here is the, uh, the cool part. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's orientate this the right way. So we've got the uh, turbos right here. It comes off this way and comes straight down, and it snakes down, and you can angle these two pieces uh, around. And uh, what we ended up getting here is um, what you see here. So let's uh, get a little closer look here and what happens. So you can see inside here how the, uh, the rust basically made this layer really, really thin. So this is a, this is a, um, a ribbed uh, connection that allows the downpipe to flex. And it was not wrapped. There was no exhaust wrap on this. Uh, and it flexed... Um, you know, either to its limit, or it just, I mean, here's the thing, it never leaked for the first two, you know, one year and 10 months of installation, and then it just randomly started. And you can see how this part here is just really weak, and then it just sort of started a chain, a chain effect. And the only thing they tore today was uh, up the top here, was uh, just getting it out. All that was holding this together was the mesh, they said. So it was just the mesh that was holding this guy on. And you can see here on the rear how the mesh basically deteriorated uh, to this point. I don't want to do any more damage to it because... Seriously? Nice exhaust. Um, this just deteriorated. Um, so that's the result of the Bull X downpipe. I'm going to save my opinions for um, the experts that watch these videos. You can see the, the wrap itself stopped right there. We didn't do anything screwy with it. The wrap did stop where the bin started. And uh, it just snapped. It was just in two pieces. So, really wish I had more to add. I'm not an expert on exhaust systems. That's what happened to the Bull X downpipe for me. Um, I'm a little disappointed. But we'll see how the new one does. They replaced it. I don't know if they have enough goodwill to replace another one if that one breaks. But again, this was installed by a professional um, in the car, so hopefully it lasts longer than this thing. I don't know what to say, but for those of you that are curious, that's the final result. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a terrific day.